Hi everybody, this is Paul Mallory. Welcome to this Thrive Tribe video. I'm delighted to be joined today by Caroline Arnold, who is an executive coach. Good morning, Caroline. Good morning, Paul. Thanks for having me here today. Thank you so much for joining us. We're going to have um, a fantastic conversation about some of the coaching you do. And uh, we had a great conversation the other day, so we're going to continue it, aren't we? And, uh, Indeed. Share it with the Thrive Tribe members. So um, I thought it'd uh, be a good idea to start, Caroline, if you could just explain a little bit about what you do and maybe a little bit of your journey, how you got there, and I'll interrupt and ask questions. Sounds good. So uh, my, what I do now, so I'm an executive coach. What does that mean? So I mainly work um, with women who are working in the corporate world. They tend to be sort of the 35 to 45 um, senior manager, director role, and they're possibly feeling overwhelmed, a bit frustrated, want to take their career to the next level, um, possibly want to work flexibly or want to earn more money, um, and they just don't really know what the next step is. It might be they've actually always worked for the same company, so they've never gone and updated their CV or used LinkedIn for job hunting or know any recruitment agencies. So kind of working through that, but also understanding actually why do they feel overwhelmed and frustrated and why they're waking up on you know Sunday, two in the morning and dreading going into work. Mm. Um, I also do quite a lot of training and diversity training. So going into big corporates and doing um, diversity and unconscious bias. So we all have a bias. When we meet someone or see someone, we all make a really quick judgment. Um, and, and that's okay, but it's actually the impact that that might have in the workplace. So it might be actually you prefer to work with men, um, or you might prefer to work with women, or you might prefer to work with younger people because you feel graduates young and ambitious and dynamic and full of energy. Um, so actually you might then give a job opportunity to someone who's younger than someone who's older. Mm -hmm. Equally, you might prefer to work with someone who's older because they're more experienced and they, they get it. So it's that kind of judgment and actually how it can affect people in the workplace. Okay. So that's what I do now. Uh, in terms of my journey, um, after university, I did a graduate uh, placement with Waitrose, the supermarket, John Lewis mm -hmm. brand, was with them for a couple of years in the supermarkets, managing the stores. Um, but really the bit I enjoyed wasn't necessarily, you know, understanding how the baked beans got on the shelf. Um, it was more actually, how do you motivate 18 year olds to come in on a Saturday night and fill those shelves? Um, <laughs> really tough job, really tough job. They don't want to be there. Uh, they just want a bit of money. Yeah. Um, so for me, it was really the HR, human resources side. So um, left Waitrose and worked for large corporates in London um, doing HR. So the full employee life cycle from uh, recruitment um, all the way through to kind of why actually are employees leaving us and everything in between. Um, and left that two and a half years ago to set up my own business. And what, what was you thinking setting up your own business? What was driving that for you? So it really started when I was about 13, 14. I read Richard Branson's book and just oh. thought he was so inspirational. Mm. Um, so always knew from quite a young age I'd have my own business, but had absolutely no idea what that business would be. But at 14, you don't really care. Mm. Um, you just know um, it will come to you at some point. Uh, mm. I then did my coaching qualifications. Uh, I'm trained in NLP or neuro linguistic programming I did that about 10 years ago um and thought it was kind of all my personal development course but it would also help me at work um and knew that at some point i'd have my own coaching and training business i really enjoyed being in corporate i liked being in a team um i liked the benefits that came with being in a company you got paid on the last friday you got private health insurance mm -hmm you knew that you would always have you know work coming and going um and you got to know people i liked that kind of security um but it was so probably three years ago um i was on the train uh coming in to london and just thought actually, i don't want to be doing this in a year's time um had a you know three hour commute every day um working long hours and just thought actually i this is not what I want to be doing in a year's time. So made the move from London to Bristol and set up the business then. So was it, was it more about lifestyle than, than work? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I've been in London 
probably 10 or so years and just mm. didn't want to be in London anymore. Um, mm. My partner and I, on paper, we kind of thought Bristol sounded good. We hadn't actually been to Bristol, um, mm. but we wanted to be near the water. We wanted to be near Wales um, to go mountain bike riding. My family were in the Southwest, but we also wanted a big city that had companies and to get back to London. Mm. Um, so yeah, a bit of a lifestyle, but also actually, I think, partly also being true to myself that I'd always wanted my own business. So it felt like the right time to do that as well, to have that quality of life. And actually it was great being in corporate, but I could only help the employees who I was responsible for. Mm. Um, and that might be, you know, 300 people. Whereas as a coach or a trainer, mm. you know, I might go in and train 40 people in a day and you consistently do that every day over the year and you just kind of, you know, can reach more people. Right. Right, so from a work point of view and a lifestyle point of view, it, it, it was a good change by the sound of it. Absolutely. You reminded me a little bit of a conversation we were having before about um, the extent to which we design our lives or mm. they kind of accidentally evolve. And depending on whether you believe in determinism or not, we may or may not have any choice in any of this. <laughs> so yeah, it depends on your philosophy of life, okay? But um, assuming we do have some impact through our choices, and I think we probably do, um, it's interesting, isn't it, that, that we were chatting before about, you know, generally speaking, people don't create some master plan at the beginning of their lives and then, and then work forward and fulfill it, in my experience. Generally, there's a lot of luck and a lot of synergy involved. Um, how do you see that working? Because what you were describing there was almost like a redesign of your life mm -hmm. because you became clearer about who you were, were and what you wanted. Is that, is that true? Absolutely. I've always been a goal setter and actually Paul, I'm going to move and show you what the pink board behind me. Ah. I don't know if you can see that. It's yeah. only got one or two flip charts, uh, post-it notes, but that's my yearly planner. Okay. Um, so it's divided into each month. Um, and next week, um, I'm going to take a couple of days and think, right, what do I want to achieve in my life and my business in 2018? Um, and I'll just fill it with post-it notes. And then at the end of each month, I kind of think, right, what have I achieved or what have I not achieved? And why have I not achieved it? Is it because actually it's a bit uncomfortable out of the comfort zone or it's not relevant? Um, so, you know, if it's out of the comfort zone, it gets moved to the next month and how will I achieve it? Or actually, is it not relevant and it comes off? So I've always been a goal setter, um, but I think a lot of people, they just don't know what they want to do and they don't know where to go to understand what they want to do. So it might be they've gone to a school um, and they've, you know, all their friends are going to university, so they'll all go to university. And then all their friends are moving to London to get a job. So they move to London to get a job. Yeah. And, and they send out, you know, 50 applications as a graduate and they just take the one that they get offered because as a graduate, you just want a job. <laughs> it's not necessarily actually, I want to work with children or I want to work in a company that's a charity and gives back or, you know, yeah. is there, works and does research with cancer research or something. You know, you don't necessarily think of that at age 22, mm. but then you almost then go into that path. So if you mm. start working in financial services in the marketing department, mm. that starts to kind of be your career path. Yeah. And until you actually have a, a think about actually, do I want to stay in financial services in marketing? Mm. You'll probably just get opportunities given to you in that area. Yeah. And it's, it's really, uncomfortable to think actually I want to leave what I know and everyone that I know and all my contacts yeah. um, so it's a very brave decision and actually sometimes you don't even know who to go and speak to outside of your area yeah and you, and you obviously coached a lot of people and looked after a lot of graduates and so on I mean it's a, maybe a slightly unfair question but just intuitively what what percentage of people do you think are actually in a role that suits who they really are and, and how many, what percentage of people are just in something that pays money because that's where they ended up? I would say most people are just where they ended up. Mm. Um, think of, you know, the, my clients, a lot of them have just almost fallen into it because they knew someone or their family knew someone and they got work experience and they thought that's okay for a week. <laughs> yeah. I'll go do that for the rest of my life. Yes. Um, they were 65. <laughs> exactly. And actually when you're, you know, I remember when I joined Waitrose, I got my first pension statement and I went up to my boss and I said, 
it says here I'm going to retire in 2047. He went, yeah, you probably won't. <laughs> It'll probably be later. <laughs> and in 23, you don't really think about retiring, you know, in no. your 60s, 70s. Um, and it was actually, I don't want to be in a supermarket for 40 years. Um, so, but actually, what do I do now that I've got this skill set um, and I'm kind of ring fenced almost? Um, and, you know, I work with a lot of recruitment companies. Yep. And yes, they do want to help you. They want you to get the best job. They want you to stay. But equally, they also want their commission. <laughs> End of the day, they need to hit target and they yep. need to get their bonus and they need to get their commission. Yep. Completely understandable. So yep. actually, you're a marketing director. It's in financial services. It's easier to find you marketing director role in financial services. Absolutely. So you just don't necessarily get the role sent to you working for a charity. <laughs> so that's interesting. We kind of, um, I was about to say, we get branded. That makes us sound like cattle in a Western, but actually maybe that's not <laughs> a bad analogy. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking marketing brand. So we end up with sort of personal brand of representing ourselves as being something in the world. And that's what we're known for. And that's what people will pay us to do because we have experience in it. And we're known as being one of those things. Yeah. Um, but when I said we get branded, it is almost like branding a, a cow, isn't it? Putting the stamp on us and, yeah. and labeling us as a particular thing and that's if i may just introduce this into the conversation that's very much how i felt when i left corporate life because caroline i suddenly realized that my brand didn't represent who i really was at all and i suddenly realized that's what made, was making me really unhappy mm. you know that i wasn't being me actually yeah. i was being this branded pool that we'd created over the years through career um paths and decisions and progression mm. so to me, these days, you know, coaching people and, and producing these videos and so on, what I try to get people to think about a bit more is, is who are you really? It's a, and it's a much more difficult question to answer, I think, than what kind of job do you want? I mean, that's a tough one, but at least you can have a menu of jobs and you can pick one. Yeah. The issue becomes, will you actually be happy when you're doing it? And in what environment will you be doing it is, is very important as well. Because for me, corporate life in the end was fairly intolerable. This isn't true for everyone, of course. This is me as an individual. We're all very different. And we all have different needs for security and variety and excitement, or I'd quite like a bit more boredom, please. You know, we're all different in our, in our needs. But for my set of needs personally, that was not the right setting for me, I realized. Yeah. Um, it's great grounding and I learned a lot. You know, that's the other part of it. Through our mm. accidental decisions, we learn a lot and we experience and we find out who we are and who we're not. So yeah. I don't know, I'm going around in circles now. Maybe there is no alternative to just experimenting and finding out who you are. Yeah, and I think one of the things I ask people to think about is imagine yourself in a year's time or if you can three years time, but sometimes people can't quite get to three years time, but if they can three years time, um, and almost give yourself some time and space, so 20 minutes in a quiet you know, area that you won't be disturbed, and really think about, right, in three years time, you're gonna wake up, where do you want to wake up? Is it where you currently are? If not, what, are you in a flat, are you in a house, are you in the city, are you in the countryside? Who's lying next to you? <laughs> um, is it, are you single? Are you with a partner? Do you have kids coming in? And literally go through every stage of your day from what are you eating for breakfast? Are you eating on your own? Are you eating at your desk? Um, are you working from home? Are you traveling? Um, you know, are you working for a small company, a big company for yourself? And just going all the way through the day. Because mm. that can then start to give you ideas. Okay, so in three years time, I imagine myself with a partner, with two kids, or one kid, you don't have any, um, and actually I'm working from home two days a week and, and mm. traveling three days. And mm. if I'm not there yet, you can start to work back. Okay, so in two years I need to do this, in a year I need to do this, in six months, three months, and then do a 90 day plan. Okay. And then just keep doing a 90 day plan and viewing it. Mm. Because otherwise if you think, oh my God, in three years I want my life to be completely different that's quite a scary goal you know mm. where do you even begin whereas actually in 90 days if you want to update your cv mm. update your linkedin profile meet five recruitment companies mm. uh, maybe go for three job interviews it becomes a bit more manageable mm. and you know what you're aiming for um so i know i've i've moved 31 times i've literally moved house mm. 31 times mm. um and i'm 35 so that's a lot um <laughs> And I know I live in a lovely flat in Bristol, but I want the garden. I want the house in the garden just for a bit more space. So I know I've probably got one more house move in the next five years. Mm -hmm. 
and so actually when I start kind of going out and about on the bike, it's like, oh, okay, this is quite a new village. I haven't seen this before. And it's just at the back of my mind. Oh, okay, yeah. in five years time, this yeah. could be where I want to live. Yes. I can't do my business as it is now, yes. living in the countryside. <laughs> yes. So it's just making those decisions, mm. you know, don't need a three-year plan, but actually just what are you going to do in the next 90 days? It's a little bit like um, setting your intentions, isn't it? And, yeah. and, and then waiting to see what's delivered. Absolutely. Um, uh, and I'm a great believer in that, actually. That I, th I think the challenge always for us as humans is, is getting clear. Mm. Clear about who we are, really. Yeah. Authentically. Clear about what we want in life which usually involves, in my experience, it usually involves looking beyond the material. It can include the material, but certainly in our culture in the West, we get obsessed with the material and forget about everything else. What you discover at the end is that it's the everything else that was important, not the material. But, you know, it's part of the mix. But, yeah, just setting those intentions for what kind of life. And when you were talking about it then, what struck me was you were not talking so much about a career, um, unless I missed it, it was more about how do you want life to be from the moment you get up in the morning to the moment you go to bed at night? Exactly. It starts to get more into how do you feel about it, doesn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and sometimes it's actually, um, okay, maybe I want to work, you know, move from financial services to a charity, for example. Okay, I don't know anyone in the charity sector. So mm. I'm going to make sure in 2018, I will go find people who work in the charity sector and explore that to actually, you know, can I afford it? Um, you know, financial services on the whole tend to pay better. Mm. Um, so actually, what would that mean? Um, start building a contact base in charity sector. Could you go volunteer? You know, actually, is it just, you know, why the charity sector, for example? What would that give you or what would it not give you? Yeah. Um, and have more information. So actually, okay, maybe the charity sector is not for you. Okay, move on to the next area. Yes. It's, it's what it's, what is it going to give you? Um, or you know, how will you, will you be happier? Will you be more satisfied? Mm. Will you feel that you have a purpose to get up in the morning? Mm. Will you not have that kind of dread on a Sunday thinking, oh my God, I'm back to work tomorrow? Yeah. Um, or actually, has your lifestyle changed and you've now got kids and you don't want to be leaving on a Monday morning yeah. and going to Dublin to work for the next four days? Yes, yes, that's right. And I, I was mentioning to you earlier, Caroline, the, the, uh, the app or the web uh, tool that I'm working on, which is going to be about um, helping people to um, ask the right questions to to get clearer about what's most important to them as an individual in life. Because again, I think that that seems to me to be the biggest challenge is getting clear about what is it that would actually make an in, each individual one of us happy yes. and fulfilled. Um, because I think we all jump to assumptions about what those things are. Mm. And, and they often involve money and material stuff. Um, but um, I think it's, it, it seems to be one of the hardest questions for people to get clear about who they really are underneath it all. Um, so, so yes, I, when I was thinking about that issue, um, and, and I've had that experience many times over the years of, of coaching people and, and having people work for me and, and doing performance reviews with them and so on, um, and I've often had the experience of saying of people saying, I'm very unhappy with the role I have or the job I have. I want to do something different. Mm. Yet when I ask them, what's the different thing you'd like to do? They don't know. And they say, well, what's available? You know, like, give me the menu and I'll yes. choose the least offensive one from the list. Um, so this, this point about designing or setting the intention for what we want to do because of who we really are, I think gets to the crux of it. And, and, and I think people find it very difficult. Do you, do you experience that in coaching as well? Absolutely. Um, and I think partly it's, as you said, from a, a culture perspective, we're almost brought up to do what's expected of us. Mm. And so if all of your peers are going to school, university and getting a job, you will probably follow that path as well. Mm. Um, and it's, what, what is it? Is it your, your most like the five people you hang around with? Mm. Um, so actually, it's quite brave to step away from that you know, whether that's move out of London, for example, or move out of the city, or move into the city, mm. um, that's quite difficult to do. Um, so I think, you know, working with someone like a coach, for example, who you can kind of talk that through, actually, mm. what is it about now that you're not happy with? 
Mm. Um, is it the hours? Is it the salary? Is it your boss? Um, is it your team? Um, you know, what exactly is it? And understanding what's the issue, because actually what you don't want to do is move somewhere else and it's exactly the same problem. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's what's wrong now? Mm. And then thinking about actually, okay, where do you want your life to go? Um, and what do you want to be different? Um, and getting clarity, I think, for me, in, and that might be speaking to different people, um, it might be trying different things, it might be joining, um, for, you know, if you're a bit more senior, it might be actually joining a company as a non-exec director, um, and that might be voluntary, but actually it's just getting exposure to something else and trying something else. And you might think, well, actually, I really enjoy this strategic side or I really enjoy working for this company um, but it's just getting clarity and sometimes that's easier to do with someone else who can challenge what you're saying yes. and, and you know really make you think about actually what's right or wrong now and, and what do you want to be different in six months time three years time yes. um, and then you know making that first step and it's just sometimes breaking it down into little steps and doing one thing every day yeah. I, um, the, my, my coach um, always talks about a client she had and she realized where she wants to be in three years time was to be able to go to the cinema every Tuesday afternoon. That's where she wanted her business to be, that she could take Tuesday afternoon to go to the cinema mm -hmm. in three years time. So she said it made it much easier when she was kind of getting opportunities. Would it get her to that step? in three yeah. years time yeah. so when opportunities came through it was actually oh, actually yeah that will you know be a big client so yes i'll take that on mm. or actually no i don't want that and it just it was a really simple thing and for most people that's you know neither here nor there going to the cinema on your own every afternoon you know, once a week and um, but for her that meant she built the business successfully to take yeah. a half day off every week well, what's great about that example, I think, there's a few things that are great about it. One is the objective is very clear. Mm. It's very easy to measure. Did we achieve it or not? Am yes. I actually going to the cinema or achieve yeah. it? So, so the first point is people aren't clear about what they're trying to achieve. Mm. How are you going to achieve it if you don't know what it is and you can't articulate it? So that's, that's one thing about that story, I think. And the other one that really struck me about that story was, you know, earning material reward is fine and great if you're earning it for a reason. Mm. So she suddenly had a great motivation to earn a bit more money so that she could take every Tuesday afternoon and do what she really wanted. And people may say this is a really trivial thing, but it doesn't matter. It's whatever's important to the individual, right? For yes. someone else, that might be taking an afternoon off to learn a language or become a sportsman or whatever. Yeah. Whatever it is for you, you know, whatever turns you on. But what I like about it is the fact that we're now earning money for a reason. Yes. And, 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 and what I struggle with is this concept that we're earning money for the sake of having more money so we can buy bigger things and show everyone how important we are. Yes. It just doesn't seem enough to me. And, I, you know, I think, uh, you know, even Warren Buffett and Bill Gates reach the point where they say, OK, I have got the most, in fact, of anyone. Yes. What, what's next? Exactly. <laughs> you know? um, and... Um, I don't know, it'd be interesting to ask this question, but I guess those people would probably say it's more fulfilling to then spend that money solving world problems than it was, you know, just collect, collecting it in the bank and worrying about the tax. Absolutely. You know, I mean, it's, these things are easy to say, of course, when you're in a reasonably comfortable position, you're earning some money. For I do understand for people who are, who are struggling and want to yeah. do better in life, they want to progress. Um, I, 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 I suppose what I would always encourage people to do is think about the longer term as well mm. so yeah you know when we when we're young and when we have less we always want to progress and make our quality of life better for ourselves and our families but i think don't lose sight of the longer term why are we here what is it we're trying to do mm. while we're here and have a purpose for all of that That's yeah it's interesting so i lecture at university um part-time um so sometimes kind of one day a week and it's second year students so they're 19 20 um and it's really interesting because you know talk about what you want to do or you know what are you doing at the moment and there's such a divide between the students some of them have never had a job and still don't have a job at 19 20 which for me is quite surprising especially now with university fees etc um, but they want to concentrate on their education and so my challenge to them is Absolutely, I'm not going to you know, say otherwise, education is really important. But when you've finished your degree, 
and you're trying to apply for graduate jobs, you're going to be up against people who've also got the degree, mm. but you haven't got any experience. Mm. And it is so different. You know, they want to know that you'll turn up to work mm. on time. You'll get it. You've got some work ethic. You've got some experience and you know what you like and don't like. Yeah. And you've got the, the students who have been working for three years, four years. Mm. Um, and yeah, their CV is really jumpy, but actually they're figuring out what they like and what they don't like. Yeah. And one of my students, she worked at, um, she'd worked at Pizza, Pizza Hut or mm. like Domino's, those kind of things. Yeah. Boy, could she manage a room because actually mm. if you're dealing with, you know, customers at two in the morning, which she was doing and they just want their pizza. Yeah. <laughs> actually, she knew she quite liked that. She liked dealing with customers. Mm. She liked a challenge. Yeah. Um, and for her, she, thought, she knew that she didn't want just an office job. She had to be out and about, you know, with customers. Mm. She knew that having done that experience, mm. Mm. whereas some other students were like, oh my God, that sounds awful. Yeah. <laughs> but until you've done it, you don't know. Great point, great point. And sometimes the thing that sounds awful, when you try it, you rise to it and think, my God, this is actually me. And exactly. I, I, I have to say, that's exactly the experience I had with training years mm. ago commercial director I, there's no way I saw myself as being a trainer I, the sound of a trainer's life you know going off to strange hotels in the middle of the country <laughs> and setting up some room you know it sounded awful it was the last thing in the world I wanted to do until through circumstances I did it a couple of times and uh, you know the third or fourth time I started to think wow I really love doing this yeah. so sometimes we surprise ourselves and I couldn't agree with you more we've got to try more things we've yes. got to just dip in and try things and that, in a, in, in a sense, Caroline, is what thriving to me is all about, actually. It's about stretching ourselves and finding out what we're capable of. Yeah. Because to our amazement, when we do that, sometimes we find things that we can do that we never realised, and we love them. Absolutely. And, 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 and always, I think, my biggest test of whether we're doing the right things in terms of why we're here is how it makes us feel. It's the energy it gives us. When I feel it really excited... I'm really uh, inspired by what I'm doing. I know I'm on the right track. I know I'm doing the right things and I want to do more of that kind of thing. Yeah. So, um, so I think, again, I would, I would encourage people listening to, to think about what are those things for you? You know, what are those energy points? I was thinking about a metaphor for this the other day. It's almost like mining for gold nuggets, you know, that yeah. every time you hit one of those energy points, that's a little gold nugget, grab it have a look at it and see what it is and ask yourself how can I get more of those gold nuggets those moments that make me feel really alive and inspired because yeah. that's the difference between thriving and surviving to me absolutely I use a really simple app um, it's called five as in the number five um, journal it's five pounds for the year um, and every morning it asks you to write in your little journal on the phone and it asks you three things that you're grateful for so straight away in the morning, you've got that kind of positive mindset. And sometimes it's, you know, I had a hot shower, I've got a roof over my head, I've had a breakfast or whatever. You know, really small things. Yeah. Then it asks you what three things are you going to achieve that day? Mm -hmm. And that's really interesting because actually, are you excited about those three things you are going to mm -hmm. achieve today? Mm -hmm. If not, that's, that should be an alarm bell. Yes. <laughs> if you are, brilliant. It seems like you might be on the right track. Um, and then at the end of the day, it asks you what three things have you achieved? And again, it's thinking about actually, are you excited about those three things? They could be small, they could be big, um, but it's a good way to kind of check in and actually remember, actually, we've got a lot to be grateful for um, yeah. in our life. Yeah. Um, but also, are we excited about what we're going to be doing that day? Or are we excited about what we've done that day? And if not, that might be the opportunity to kind of start exploring what to change. That sounds really useful. What was that app called again? It's called Five, uh, the five. figure five, Journal. Okay. Um, really interesting app and um yeah highly recommend it excellent and, and i'm going to keep working on my app to help people identify yes. what, they're, uh, what, what they're looking for and 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 actually as we were talking there i was just thinking as well you know almost no matter what job we're doing at the moment or what or even when you're if you're out of work you know it it's really comes down to who do we want to be in life that's that's the key i think to this um, we, we, you know, off, offline, you know, at home with, with my son, Ollie and so on, we, we have so many examples where we're sharing things we see in restaurants in shops and so on, where we're going, yeah, survivor behavior, that's not thriving, you know, where, where we get bad <laughs> service or whatever. Yeah. And it just feels like everybody's doing the wrong job. But, but actually, actually, when you go to a deeper layer, 
so many people are not being who they really are. They're not being who they could be. And they could be that in whatever they're doing at that moment. That's my belief. So, so a lot of this, as well as mindset, I think. So, so an interesting question to ask as well around this energy thing is, you know, who would I be being if I was feeling really energized and excited about life, even doing this job? Yeah. Who, who would I need to be to be to be different to be, to feel that way? I just think we all deserve to feel that way. <laughs> I've been be working for a really long time. And last week I was on holiday and I read a book. Um, I was in a hotel and there was kind of a you know um, bookshelf you could swap your books with and stuff. And there was a book that caught my eye, and it was the five people you meet in heaven. Oh yes deep for holiday but actually really enjoyable and it got me thinking about actually what is our purpose in life and it just yeah. makes me take a moment to think about um you know am I doing the right thing and I think of energy as a balloon because I'm quite a visual person so I think of a balloon and actually when my energy is really high you know my balloon is inflated yeah. and why is that is it because of what I'm doing or because I'm around people or you know yeah. whatever but yeah. equally, energy's low. Someone's literally taken a pin to the balloon and it's completely okay. yeah. you know, burst. Sure. Um, and what's going on and what do I need to reinflate my balloon? Mm. Um, and, you know, most of us will have someone in our life that we find quite inspiring mm. who we think are living the life that we want to be living. So go chat to them. Sure. Um, you know, find people who you think are, are thriving or yeah. read a book. You know, for me, it was Richard Branson. I've read all his books books he's yeah. thriving um so i read a book a week pretty much and it's actually i'm still on my journey and mm. others are ahead of me so let's learn from the people who are ahead of us um, or reach out to people you know get a coach get a mentor um, yeah. but reach out and try and build that life that you want to be living yeah and for me the spiritual dimension to this is very important as well in the sense that you know the energy thing i think in the end comes down to how you feel about life whether you feel like it has a purpose has a meaning and when, when we talk uh, viewers when we talk about having a purpose we're not talking about you need to change the world in some amazing architectural way although that's great if you do but um you know having a purpose might just like we were saying might just be deciding i'm going to be this kind of person that's my purpose is to be this kind of person in the world and we were talking earlier, Caroline, about the extent to which we design our lives or we just accidentally fall into them. We kind of can do some design work at any point on the journey. Mm. And, you know, I would encourage people to take responsibility for their own lives and for their own thriving and to ask, you know, to what extent am I feeling those inspiring, energized moments? And if I'd like more of that in my life, how might I go about getting it? Who can help, as you were saying? What tools and, and resources are there to help me? But also just who would I be in the world if I was exhibiting that, if I was being that person? How would I be a different person to the way I am today? Because I think we can choose to change. You know, we can choose to change our habits and our outlook, our mindset. And it's never too late. I was listening to a podcast. Um, he's called Pat Flynn, American guy. Uh, really great podcast. It's called Smart Passive Income. And he's all about you know, having different income streams, etc. And he had a guest on, I can't remember what her business was, but she was in her 70s mm. when she set up this new business and she was loving it. Oh my, it was just the most inspiring podcast I think I've ever listened to. I was there driving, just you know, wanted to stop and do something. Um, and she was like, you know, I never thought I'd be starting a business mm. in my 70s. Yes. And for her, it was just, it gave her a completely new lease of life. And mm purpose to get up in the morning and just incredible so yeah never too late to change Great story. And, and and it's every day isn't it i mean every day is a new experience potentially or it can be the same experience lived over again but yeah. you know, you talk about redesigning your life every morning you wake up is another opportunity to do it absolutely we all have a choice of how we react to something so yesterday for example i'd been to a brilliant uh, networking lunch absolutely fantastic got in the car flat tire <laughs> okay and you think, actually, I could really sulk and think, oh, I'm not going to get, you know, I'm going to get cold, I'm going to be delayed, and I've got people with me, and I've promised to get them home at a certain time. And, you, could, you know, I could have chosen to be really quite miserable about it. Yeah. But actually, I was in a safe space. I was with people. You know, I wasn't on my own. It wasn't dark or cold or, you know, anything like that. Mm. And actually, I got home within an hour 
you know, delay. And the gentleman who came and fixed the car, he was the nicest person. Um, and I happened to be dressed in a Santa outfit, so he thought that was quite comical. Um, we had a bit of a chat and I tweeted, you know, to the AA um, and they, you know, appreciated that. But actually, we all have a choice of how we react to everything. Yes. Um, and it was just a little bit of an inconvenience. Yes. But someone came to help and, you know, um, so yeah, I think we all have a choice of how we react and it's trying to think about can we, you know, change our thoughts and our actions and our beliefs into a more positive way. Absolutely. Well, a very nice note to end on, I think, Caroline. It's, it's been lovely talking to you, I think. And you, Paul. We leave people thinking about redesigning their lives, thinking about who they want, really want to be in life, and always more thriving, please. The world really needs more thriving. And, and by the way, there's not two sets of people, um, viewers, you know, thrivers and survivors, and you're labelled with one and you're stuck with it. it. We dip in and out. When we're not thriving, we're surviving. And, and all we're trying to do is encourage people to think, how can I personally thrive more of the time? That's really what it's all about. And it rubs off on everyone around you, doesn't it, Caroline? Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much for joining me today, Thank Caroline. Thanks for having me here today. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll uh, pause the recording there. See you next time. See you later.